Hey everyone, it's Apex and I'll be showing you one of my favorite classes and specs, the Unholy Death Knights. Best setup for glyphs, talents, gear, gymming, professions, even some macros. Everything you need to know to do well with an Unholy DK. So let's go. DKs are one of my top three favorite classes in the game. I played them to 2600 in 3v3 as well as 2400 in 2v2. So I know a decent amount about them as well as gearing and shanning and all that. I'm going to first be showing you the best gear setup you can pretty much run at the beginning of Wrath. And then I'm going to go more in depth into all the gymming and chants and whatnot right after this. So first we'll be showing a helmet. So you do PvP helmet. Obviously Deadly is going to be better. Then you could do PvP necklace and then PvP shoulders. And then 226 cape off Kel'Thuzad. But if you can't get this, then you can just do the 213 honor one from PVP. And you're gonna do PVP chest. And you can do PVE bracers, but if you don't wanna get them or you can't get them, then the PVP ones are totally fine. And then the best 200 you can run at the beginning is Betrayer of Humanity. It's better than the PVP weapons, it's better than everything else you can get raiding. This is by far the best and the most important thing to get. And if you're Sigil, you'll be getting the Sigil of Awareness. This one increases the base damage dealt by Scourge Strike by 189. And then the rest doesn't really matter. You're going to get Anvil of the Titans, or you can also get the Bandits Insignia from Raining. But let's say you just do some Winter's Grass. This one's pretty decent. It reads 84 Resilience Passive, and then Chance on Melee or Ranged Hit to increase Attack Power by 1000 for 10 seconds. But it's only item level 200. But this is a pretty decent item, and you can do very well with just this. And then if you're human, you can run both Trinkets. But if you're not human, you'd want to do Dark Moon Card Greatness plus the Insignia. So with Dark Moon Greatness, it's just a massively powerful BOE, huge strength, and then 90 passive strength, amazing. And then you're going to run this PvE Ring Ruthlessness, and then PvP Ring, and then you can run PvP Boots, PvP Legs, PvP Belt, PvP Gloves. So you can basically run a ton of PvP gear at the beginning and do very well. So you have two main ways to gym as a DK. You can go with Resil Gems if you have some PvE pieces, or you just want to have a high Resil setup, maybe you're somehow the main target, usually not the case. But you can do Resil Gems in the yellow sockets and then oranges in the red. But if you're using a lot of PvP gear, then you're going to want to be gymming for strength. So you're going to do the reverse. So you're going to have an orange in the yellow and then you're going to have the JC 34 strength gems in the red. So with Helmet, you're going to be doing 50 AP, 20 Resil. You're always going to get Resil Enchants when you can. That's why you don't want to get Inscription because you'll lose out on the shoulder Resil Enchant. But then you get Crit and Increased Damage, Chaotic Skyflare Diamond. And then you can get a orange gem then for the neck i am using a pve neck you want to try and use a pve neck over pvp as the strength is usually better for dks because you've got the rune of the fallen crusader as well as the four percent strength talent and then maybe you're playing with a pally so you have the king so you want to get pieces that have strength on them over attack power because that basically will read you know this attack power is just the flat amount but then strength will read it has a multiplier of about 19%, and if you're the pally, it's even higher. And then we go to shoulders. You get Resil Gym, and then Attack Power Resil, and then PvE Kate. Once again, we're getting this because we get strength over just attack power. And then you're gonna want to throw a Spell Pin Gym in there, and then either a Resil or an Orange. And for the chest piece, doing Resil Enchant. Always do this, don't do the stats one. That's just higher stat weight for you. And then doing Orange Yellow. And then we're gonna do PvP Bracers. If you're a BS, then you can put gems in here as well, but just go with attack power enchant. And then for your weapon, you're always going to do Rune of the Fallen Crusader. You're always going to be using a two-hander. And then for your reds, you can just do three strength gems or do three strength resil gems. And then for your sigil, we'll be doing Sigil of the Vengeful Heart. This one, surprisingly, is the best at the end of Wrath, even though it's on level 226. And then on the right side, we'll be doing gloves. So we'll be doing a blue gem, spell pen. And then I'm an engineer, so I throw rocket gloves on. You can do the haste on use, or if you're not an engineer, then you'd want to do, I think it's called Crusher, which is like 44 attack power to gloves. Then for your belt, you're going to be doing a Spellbin Gym and then a Resil Gym, but if you have a lot of PvP gear, then throw a Strength Gym in here. Then for legs, we're going to be doing Resil Stamina and then an Orange Gym as well as more Spellbin. We got to get to 130 to deal with Shadow Resistance Aura. And then for boots, you can use PvE boots which you'll be throwing in Strength Resil Gems. And then for the Enchant, you can either get Attack Power if you don't have Engineering. Otherwise, if you want the Fast Rocket Boots, then just get that. But if you don't have PvE Boots, then you'll just be using PvP Resil ones, and then you'll likely throw in a, a Strength Gem in there. And then getting to Rings, you want to avoid the PvP Rings when possible, as they're not going to have Strength on them, like I said, so you don't get that huge 19% multiplier. So I like to go with Skeleton Lord's Circle, and then the Ashen Verdict Ring. 
and then as I'm human, I'll be doing double DPS trinkets. Death's Verdict's insane. You could also do a non-heroic one paired with it, but I think STS, I did the math on it a while back, and it seemed like it had more damage and burst. So that's what I like to do there. Okay, I'll be giving you a quick rundown of all of the talents you can do. We'll be doing three points into Virulence, and then two into Vicious Strikes. We're going to avoid this. This is really for if you're tanking. Right, three into Ravenous Dead, three into Morbidity, and then two into Unholy Command. These are your two kind of flex talents you have a little bit. I like to get two points in here. It makes your death grip 25 seconds, which lines up really well with Psychic Scream, as I tend to play with a Shadow Priest in twos and threes. So you can grip fear, grip fear, grip fear. Very powerful. Uh, one in Epidemic, one point into Corpse Explosion. This hits very hard. However, it does eat your pet. So your pet will get see destroyed, and you have to wait to summon a new one. You have three points in Outbreak, 20% more damage on your hardest hitting ability, Scourge Strike. Very good. You have two points in Night of the Dead. You can go for Blood Cake Strike. I don't tend to use it, but I have seen one or two decent DKs use it. And then on a Pale Horse, this one's a lot better on like a Warrior. You already have so many ways to break out of fears and stuns and to prevent them as well as getting dispelled. You don't really need that. And then 20% amount of speed is nice, but it's not really that useful in arenas. Right, two points into Dirge, just a lot more. Right, power Generation, five points into Purity, big damage. One point in Holy Blight, this makes it so your diseases can't be dispelled. Very powerful and paired with a Shadow Priest as well. Into three points into Magic Suppression. And then two into Desecration. This is crazy good. This is what makes it so all your teammates can kite very well and people can't get away. The one in Master Ghouls, this will make it so you can control it. We're not going to be getting Reaping. However, you do have the option of Reaping or Watering Plague. Reaping will give you the benefit of doing more Death Strikes as well as being able to chain together more Scourge Strikes. So that's a big benefit there, but I don't think it's quite worth it, but it is certainly good. We're not going to get Ghoul Frenzy. It's not worth the rune. Two points in a Holy Presence gives us faster rune generation as well as we get the movement speed while we're in Frost. We don't really use blood much in PvP. Then AMZ, a great utility spell on a short cooldown, only two minutes. And then we're going to be doing three points into Crypt Fever. This will give 30% more disease damage to the target. And then one in Bone Shield, a nice little buff that we can do every now and then. And then you can get three points into Evan Plaguebringer. This one will give everyone on your party more magic damage as well as more crit chance. And then Scourge Strike, your heart's hitting ability outside of your occasional corpse explosion. We're gonna hit three points into Wandering Plague. This one does a lot of damage. And the nice thing about it, it'll not break things like Polymorph, Gouge, Blind, Sap. Not that you're really playing with mages or rogues anyway, but very nice. But you could swap this out for Reaping if you really wanted. We're gonna hit five points into Rage of Rivendare. Lots more damage and then Five more expertise. And then Gargoyle. This thing hits like a truck. Absolutely insane. This thing can actually solo people, believe it or not. And then that is it for Unholy. Now we're going to go into Frost. Here you don't have too much of an option with your talents, but there is a small option you can do. I'll show you that. So we'll get Renewed Power and then five points into Black Ice. You could take two out and get two into Icy Reach. It'll give you 10 more yards on your Chains of Ice and Icy Touch. Doesn't matter a ton. You're not really getting kited. DKs, it's hard to kite DKs anyway. And so yeah, five points into Black Ice and then one into Lichborn. This ability is extremely good. You just have to be careful getting shackled by a priest if you leave it up. You don't cancel aura. And at four points into Icy Town, and then we have to get two into Endless Winter. Four percent strength, and then Mind Freeze is now free. You never want to miss a kick due to not having your Runic Power available. So we're gonna get this. I have seen some DKs. They will go two points farther, and they will get two in the Chill of the Grave. I still don't think it's worth it, but. That is something you do. You could take two points out of here somewhere. But I think 1754 is one of the best options. And then really it's just whether you want to get Reaping, Overwatering Plague, and then if you want to do some sort of mix here with Unholy Command, Corpse Explosion, Epidemic to get on a Pale Horse, or maybe Blood Cake Blade. Moving on to Glyphs. You have a few options with Unholy, but for the minor Glyphs you don't. So Glyph of Pestilence, you have to get that. Glyph of Death's Embrace, you have to get that one as well. For the last one, you need Glyph of Raised Dead if you want to avoid the bag space or you forget the Regent but you would want to have Glyph of Corpse Explosion if you want to have that slight min-max, which won't really matter as your pet's usually on them anyway, but yes, you could get that Glyph. And for the majors, you have to get Glyph of Dark Death. This one is too amazing to not get, but then you have quite a few options for the last two. So you can get Glyph of Icy Touch, which will give you more AIDS damage, 20% more on your Frost Fever, so that's your Chains of Ice, your Icy Touch. And then Glyph of AMS, it makes it go from five second duration to seven, and on a 45 second cooldown, that's pretty insane. So you do that, but you can also get Glyph of the Ghoul. This will make your Ghoul just hit harder and have a lot more health. This doesn't matter a ton because it's so easy to get your Ghoul back, but it's not a bad Glyph. And then Glyph of Disease. This one's quite decent. And your Pestilence will now refresh disease durations and secondary effects of diseases on the primary target and back to the maximum duration when you Pestilence. 
But you can also just be reapplying chains because you will have to sometimes for the slow or maybe you want to lay a desecration with a plague strike anyway. It's not like a must have, but it's not a bad glyph. So those are your main options. Then for professions, there was a clear best winner here and that is jewel crafting. With jewel crafting, you'll be able to get a 34 Brazil gem or a 34 strength gem at the beginning of the game and you can get three of them, which will lead you to 42 more strength or resilience at the beginning compared to let's say blacksmithing, which is better later as you can't get epic gems until later. So you only have blue gems at the beginning. So if I'm doing, let's say a 20 resil gem, then at the beginning of the game, it'll only be 16 or 16 strength. So with blacksmithing, you get two more sockets in your gloves and bracers, but that'll only end up being an extra 32 resil or 32 strength compared to jewel crafting, which will give you 42 strength or resil. So that's the best one there. But then what to pair with it? Well, you could go with tailoring, which will give you a little bit of a damage boost with the cape enchant. However, you lose the spell pin enchant, which is very powerful. And considering gyms are worse at the beginning, you really want to hit that 130 spell pin for shadow resistance aura and shadow protection. So ideally you don't go tailoring either. And then engineering, you can't use most of its benefits in arena, but you can use the glove enchant, which is a 45 second cooldown off the global while silence, you can use it rocket gloves. This can crit for about 3000 and it's pretty decent on a short cooldown. It adds a little bit of burst. DKs could use some more burst. So you can do that. You can also do the 340 haste that engineering gives. Otherwise though, you wouldn't get this and you just get an attack power enchant and maybe you'd go blacksmithing or something else. But the best option for sure is going to be jewel crafting and then you either pair it with engineering or blacksmithing. I would recommend engineering, but if it's later in the game when epic gems are out, then I would probably go JC blacksmithing. And then I'll show you some good DK macros that I think people should be running. So you can run a death and decay macro. This one has just an exclamation at the beginning. So if you hit it twice, so you'd go to summon the D&D, but then the second time you hit it, it would get rid of it. But with this macro, you can just keep spamming it, as you can hear, and it won't be disappearing. And then you can also be running a pet one, two, three, gnaw, and I have it paired with leap, so it'll go to anyone in arenas and stun whoever I want. So I do, if I hit B, it'll stun my main target. If I do shift B, control B, alt B, it'll stun the arena one, two, threes. And I have the same thing for chains of ice, as well as death grip and mind freeze. I think these are very important, so I can just go like control five, control F, and that will death grip the arena two and then kick them. So I don't even have to target them for any of that. So I think that's very powerful. Check out my how to arena guide if you wanna see more about those macros in depth. And then I have a huddle macro. This will make it so you can make it so your pet will take less damage, kind of like a shield wall. Very important to have, you don't wanna be clicking it or something. And then some start attack macros like Icy Touch. So you don't wanna not be autoing while you're attacking. So if I'm ever using Icy Touch, which is rare, then it'll start my attacks. And then I have an arena one, two, three for my silence. Very important. This is like counter spell or spell lock or priest silence. And then I also have a death pack one. So this will sacrifice your pet so you can get that quick heal. But if you don't have your pet out, it'll first summon one and then sack it, which is really important in the spur of the moment because you're probably dying and that's why you're using this. And then I will have a Lichborn macro. So you might use this to break a priest fear, but then if you keep the buff up, then they can just shackle you and CC you anyway. So you'll want to sometimes cast your Lichborn and then remove it so that way you don't get CC'd. And then the last macro I like to use is a death coil healing macro. So normally you're just death coiling to do DPS, but occasionally you'll use it to heal your pets or yourself. You don't want to heal your pets very often. You can heal the gargoyle or your pet, but you just don't really want to be using it on that. But if you're doing Lichborn as a fear break or you just want to heal, you can hit your Lichborn and then use this modifier. So for me, if I hit Alt 2 while Lichborn's up, I can spam Death Coils into myself. And it also pairs really good with the Glyph of Death's Embrace. So every time I'm Death Coiling myself, I'm healing 20 unique power. So Death Coil only costs 40. And so if I'm spamming it on myself, then it's only 20 every time I use it. So you can heal yourself a ton, especially if you don't have Mortal Strike. So this is a big way besides death back for a DK to heal a lot. So those are the main macros I'd be using. And you might be wondering what are the best classes and specs to be pairing with your Unholy DK. For healers, it's going to be Holy Paladins number one, this priest number two, and then Resto Shamans can kind of work, but lacking the spell will hurt quite a bit. But if you have a really good Resto Shaman, it can definitely work as DKs in general are very strong in 2v2. And then for DPS comps, your best option is to be playing with a Red Paladin or a Prague. Red Paladin seems to work a little better, but Prague has a little more damage and more healing. So it depends on what comps you're against. And then a Prot Paladin can even work. However, they have very low healing, and they make up for it with insanely high sustain, especially if 
are fighting clumped up targets like a melee cleave. You can also run DK Shadow Priest in twos. This one has some really bad matchups, but it can do very well as the synergy between the two is quite strong. So if the Shadow Priest lives, you will probably be winning through the crazy DK damage and whatnot. And then some honorable mentions, you can also run with an Enhancement Shaman or maybe a Feral Druid, but these comps do not do as well. For 3v3s, DKs have the luxury of having some of the best comps available to them. They have the Notorious TSG, which is your Arms Warrior, DK, Holy Pally. The Arms Warrior has insane pressure with Mortal Strike plus Unrelenting Assault. And then the DK has insane damage, usually the top damage in the game, almost no matter what the comp is. Combined with Holy Paladin's Freedom Dispels, Sacred Cleansing, his ability to bubble to keep dispelling and keeping them on a target will mean something's dying and they will probably win. Especially if this is powered up with, let's say, Shadowborn or really good PvE gear. And the other top tier comp is PhD. This has two variations, a Holy Pally and a Disc Priest, but it is DK, Marksman Hunter, and then either Holy Pally or Disc Priest. The Holy Pally version is a lot more resilient, I think a little bit better, but the Disc Priest does work pretty well as a little more offensive, has better matchups versus some of the mage teams. So this comp has insane damage. Basically, the Hunter does the role of the Arms Warrior, where he's supplying Mortal Strike and then huge burst. And then he also has some decent CC, which is usually being used on the healer unless they're able to go on the healer using the insane DK pressure and desecrations. Some other comps that are very powerful but not quite as good as those two top tier ones I mentioned is DK Shadow Priest Holy Pally. This one has insane aids damage, but usually the Shadow Priest is getting trained a lot, so it shuts down his crazy damage a bit. If they're not on him, things are dying very quickly, and the ability to combine Death Grip plus like Scream pretty much every 25 seconds is extremely powerful. So even if they're training him, they're most likely Gonna still be getting feared which leads to strangulate silence and hodge combos out of the fear so very powerful synergy there and another one is the affliction lock dk holy pally variant so similar to the shadow priest variant except you lose the double defensive spell you still have fell hunter but that's nowhere near as good as priest double defensive dispel as well as the offensive dispel and that one has even more damage and can do a lot more damage while the lock's getting trained i think this variant's maybe slightly better but they're both very close to each other and both have insane aids damage. You will lose against this team almost for sure if the game starts to go long. Thanks for watching. That is it for my guide. And let me know in the comment section below what class and spec you would like to see next. And if this video is helpful to you, please throw the video a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one.